If any of the following issues apply to you and your study, it means you have a big problem and you must ditch this research idea immediately or at least work on improving it. So the first problem or a group of problems has to do with sampling. And apart from the more common advice, something you often hear about and read about in your textbooks, I want to specifically focus on two scenarios. So number scenario number one is your whole study, your entire study is based on and dependent on access to an individual specific person or institution. This is not what you want. As you can imagine, uh, we simply cannot rely on, on such assumption, on assumption that everything will go right with this specific person or institution. Maybe the institution will get shut down. Maybe there will be organizational structure uh, changes. Maybe this person will leave the institution. Maybe this person will uh, feel ill, or maybe they simply will decide they don't want to participate. So there are many problems. And with your PhD or master's, uh, you're not in a situation to be able to put all eggs in one basket and simply put the whole study on the line because of this single assumption. You definitely don't want to do that. So uh, yes, there are studies that explore aim to explore specific institutions, let's say a youth center in Birmingham, or you know, a certain organization dealing with migrants in a specific city. However, I do need to have a plan B, basically. This institution or a person needs to be replaceable. That's the only thing. I'm not saying you don't want to base your study on a single person or institution or group of people or single context. I'm just saying that this context or, or institution or, or whatever, whoever your participant is, cannot be uh, irreplaceable. That's the only problem because obviously, again, if something goes wrong, and as you know, uh, whatever can go wrong usually does go wrong. So if some, something goes wrong, you're uh, in a very bad and unfortunate situation. So think about it, and I would definitely not advise you to, to plan your study this way. And another problem that also has to do with sampling, but it's basically the opposite of that problem. Uh, in this scenario, we do have this general idea, this broad idea, but we don't really know who our participants will be. So imagine you're thinking about this brand and you're trying to explore the sustainability of this uh, wearable lollipop. Say what? <laughs> that, that, would be, that would be a weird product. But imagine that's what you're telling me. So that's what you're telling me. I want to explore the sustainability of the wear wearable lollipop. That's fine. It could be a good idea. I don't know. There is no way for me to know if it's a good idea. Uh, unless you actually tell me who exactly it is that you want to talk to. Are you planning to talk to the directors of the company who produce them? Are you going to talk to the marketing people? Are you going to talk to the consumers? Uh, as you can see, there are completely different studies, completely different ideas. Or if you just tell me you want to explore the phenomenon of migration to a specific country, who do you want to talk to? It's, it's not enough of an idea if you tell me this, uh, this kind of a statement, if you provide me with this kind of statement. It's just the very beginning of the idea, but there's absolutely no reason for me to think that it's a strong research idea unless you have 100% clarity as to who needs to, uh, who you need to talk to in order to, to conduct your study. And this nicely leads us to the second group of problems, namely problems with questions that need answered and who answers them. So I have this entire video in which I talk about good research questions, bad research questions, but it's not exactly what I want to talk about here. This is, these are the technical, uh, technical aspect of the research questions here. I, I mean, uh, slightly broader and bigger problem. So, so again, it kind of, like I said, leads from the previous problem. You don't know what questions you need answered. That's a big problem. It's not enough to say, I want to explore sustainability of these wearable lollipops <laughs> or or I want to explore migration. What about that sustainability? It is that you need answered. Is it why people buy these lollipops or why these uh, people don't buy these lollipops or what the, the audience, the customers, the consumers think about the sustainability? Do they perceive them as sustainable? Is it about the mission, the company's mission statement and values and, and whether they want to be sustainable and whether they want to be environment friendly? Or is it that we know that they want to, but we want to see why they believe it's not working out? There are so many things that can be asked. And again, all of these things, they really, uh, there, there is a huge intersection between these things and all these problems that I'm discussing in this video, because here, as you can see, there is a big overlap as well between uh, the participants, so the first problem, and also the question. So you have to know exactly what you want answered, 
what kind of questions you know you want answered in order to also know who ideally to approach and again this is something that i see a lot and i hear about a lot and by the way and this is going to be a blatant advertising but i do offer services i do offer plenty of individual support have a look at my website we can talk about your study and i'll ask you plenty questions i'll ask you plenty difficult questions it will feel at times like a boxing match you'll come out really tired but you'll also be satisfied because we will together get there so feel free to explore my website if you're still not sure after this video but what i meant uh, is exactly that there are so many questions that need to be asked and answered in order for you to know whether it's, it's a good research idea and that's what i often do with students I, I start questioning them who is it that you need to talk to what kind of questions do we need answered so all of this uh, it also really has to do with the rationale the problems with the rationale which is the, the third uh, third section the third group of problems that you definitely don't want to have in your study if you want to continue with this research idea so there are many flaws with the rationale and again it's part of that questioning process that i mentioned so who do you want to talk to why do you need to talk to uh for example to the ceo or or the director of the company what do you want to talk about okay you want to talk about uh, sustainability and on you know being environment friendly is that correct so do you know uh the reason why you want wh why you need these answers what is it going to give us so what's your rationale for that do we know there's a problem maybe do we know that people maybe we know that this company aims to to project this kind of a uh, kind of an image of a company that's that's uh, friendly to their environment but maybe we know that people don't feel this way or they still don't buy it is that the problem or maybe there is something else maybe we know that people don't buy this brand and we want to simply ask why in which case of course you want to talk to the participants uh, maybe we know there's a discrepancy between how people view this brand and what the company wants to to project so then again maybe you want to talk to both maybe you want to talk to you know the marketing specialist in the company and you want to talk to people but then again why do we need to know why do we need to make sure that there is no discrepancy and for this you need a strong claim so you need to support your claims with the literature saying for example that you know it's important to have alignment between the, the company's you know aims and vision and the consumer's perception so every little detail every single detail of your rationale has to be firstly it has to be confirmed it has to be very clear and it has to be backed up by the literature you can't just make assumptions about things and this is the second part of this uh, of the group of problems that have to do with flaws with the rationale you don't want your rationale to be based on either your assumption or some anecdotal evidence there uh, it can be far-fetched basically every element of the rationale has to fit into each other into one another every element of the rationale has to be 100 percent confirmed because you simply can't afford people to question the rationale they will be questioning your findings they will be asking questions about your findings asking questions about how you did things but you don't want them to be questioning the very rationale you have to be 100 percent sure that there is absolutely no doubt about the need for this study there's no doubt about any of the claims that make up your rationale so if for example you're planning to explore the perceptions of the consumer of this brand of wearable lollipops you need to explain to me why is it important to know the perceptions of the consumers and that's again part of this questioning so whenever i i talk about research ideas whenever i'm supporting students i ask this kind of questions why is it important to know uh, what perceptions uh, people have of this brand firstly and again this this answer is not always that simple there's several layers of the answer so firstly you will tell me because we want uh, because we believe there is you know negative perception or something like that which is fine so that's the first condition you know there needs to be a need but then the second question the second layer of my question is okay do we know that knowing these perceptions will help with anything so is there any reason to assume that knowing these perceptions will change something if you tell me clearly that yes there is research for example that says that depending on the perceptions xyz happens or or something else you know like the, the clear uh, clear rationale and clear implications of this is that if we know the perceptions we can for example uh, adjust the marketing strategy uh, this can inform the marketing strategy so you can see there has to be a clear reason for everything in your research idea and and as i said earlier it's uh, not uncommon that people simply lack this clear reason this clear explanation of every element of the rationale so do let me know if you have any questions after this video 
uh, post your comments, like the video if you learned something new, share it to others so that others can see it and discover this content. And I'll see you in the next one. Don't forget to check out my ebook entitled Scholar's Guide to AI Assisted Thematic Analysis, which is a useful resource for thematic analysis, whether you do plan to use AI or not. It contains plenty of useful advice, step by step instructions for thematic analysis, and a list of prompts that you can copy and paste into ChatGPT.